Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning. to First Contact Radio. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Poet. He's a man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe. From the weather and space to UFOs. We'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. We'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. We it's have time arrived. to demand First the contact. truth. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome back to First Contact Radio. Today is Thursday, the 9th of October, 2014. Our sun sign is in Libra. Our moon sign has made a transition from Aries and now it is in Taurus. It entered there just a little more than an hour ago. Taurus is an earth sign, so we have an air sign and an earth sign. We have Libra and Taurus. The tarot cards would be Justice and the Hierophant. So, we know how air is. Air moves around. That's what we've been dealing with with our conscious mind over the last couple weeks. And earth, we know, is stable. Earth doesn't move therefore we have stubbornness involved when the bull sits down the bull doesn't want to move the bull likes to earth the way it is and wants just to stay and sit and enjoy deals with things of the practical world it's important to learn some of the lessons that the bull has to teach because we don't always have to rush from place to place to place which is a good thing we need to take time out to appreciate kind of like Ferdinand the bull taking time out to appreciate the nicer things in life bull or the hierophant also teaches us we need to listen to the inner teacher all right uh, we had an opposition that took place between the moon sign Taurus and Mercury that took place uh, it's taking place right about now and this opposition shows that the these two elements Mercury the mind and Taurus the bull the physical body the physical world are opposites opposite ends of the teeter-totter so are the bull and the magician mercury gonna play nice together well that's the whole idea as long as the mercury doesn't chatter too much and the bull doesn't get too upset they play nice but if the bull starts to get too uh, too caught up in the physical world then the mercury kinda gets and loses interest because the mercury is all about the mind and isn't into the stableness in the sitting down and the stillness of the bull because if the earth doesn't move but the Gemini moves all over the place so there's the opposites that can either balance themselves out or knock each other out of sync just depends on how well they're going to play together later this afternoon our moon sign Taurus is in a sextile with Neptune Neptune tells us we have to take a new perspective on things. It's the hangman in the tarot. To suspend the mind to look at things from another way. Numerology for today, number 8. Here's how we've arrived at the number 8. 1 plus 0 plus 9 plus 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 4 all add up to 17. 1 plus 7 equals 8. And there's our 8 today. So we have with the 1 plus 7, remember how I told you that uh, the way we look at this is you see what the number is 1, and there's an 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So each one of these are representative as expressing itself through the 1. So the 1 is focused concentration, the magician. So now we have here with the 7, we have the 7 or victory expressing itself from a focused concentration and brings together the idea of eight because you add them together eight is all about balance power tarot card of strength which is represented by Leo 
it's very important that we understand how this card plays itself out because righteousness or right usefulness of how we use our energies is important versus the wrong usefulness of the energies. It's like looking at a recipe when you use it the right way. Here's where the number eight is, strength. It's the balancing between mercy and severity. Here's our sun sign right here. And our moon sign, Taurus, is over here. Today, why don't we take a look at the Hierophant? We haven't looked at the Hierophant in a while. Just keep going round and round, doing a different one of these each day, so you can uh, keep getting better and better at remembering. Okay, hearing is the function assigned to the Hierophant. The Hebrew letter Va means nail. It is also the conjunction and the ornament hanging from the crown of the Hierophant and passing behind his ears is a conventional yoke. A yoke is something that joins together, again, symbolizing union. The Hindu word for union is yoga. This card symbolizes interior hearing or the development of intuition by the practices of yoga. The Hindu word, um, that which we call interior hearing, is the real teaching coming from our own inner self, your true teacher. That self is represented by the hierophant. In connection, we must caution you that the true interior hearing is not the negative lower psychic types of clairaudience. The difference is readily distinguished by the quality of what is heard. Intuition is above reason, but it never contrary to it. It never urges you to do uneth anything unethical or unselfish. The pillars represent the law of polarity. They or the interplay of the pairs of opposites, their capitals, show a ball and a socket pattern, an acorn surrounded by oak leaves. This symbolizes the union of opposites. The design of the wands of the crossed keys is a bell. This symbolizes sound vibration used in hearing. It is also a hint that sound has a practical value in unlocking the gates of your inner temple. The two ministers who kneel before the hierophant represent desire and knowledge as indicated by the roses and the lilies of their garment. See Taurus, Va, which means hook, the whole idea of hooking together the spiritual with the physical. That is what the Hierophant is doing. It says here that uh, this is important. Intuition is above reason. Um, one of the things, remember how I said that the this card here, the Emperor, is the one who oversees so as the product as the something is manifest and created from the focus from the superconscious expressing itself the focused concentration then putting that image into the virginal mind the unconscious and through the imagination it creates and manifests what it is that was in the mind to begin with then the reason is applied by the emperor and then after reason the intuition comes along the spiritual teacher to take that thing and hook it to the spiritual world to connect it in so there's a progression that takes place with all of these energies All right, current moon phase is just a bit past the full moon since we were there yesterday it's 98 percent it's a waning moon which means we're going back down to the new moon Mars still shines low in the southwest at nightfall. Look for it to the left by about two to three fists at arm's length for the first fist-sized teapot of Sagittarius. As the season advances and the teapot moves lower, it tips ever further to pour out its last drops. The Mayan Oracle today is a sixth seed day. The rhythmic seed guided by the seed. You can see its position here in the wave spell of the storm. Seed is about planting, growing, flowering. So we have this storm, this gathering of energy. We've learned from it. We've given new birth to ourselves, been inspired, have the dreams, and now we're going to plant the seed of what it is that we've gathered here together. The phrase is I organize in order to target moving, uh, balancing awareness. I seal the input of flowering with the rhythmic tone of equality. I am guided by my own power doubled. Certainly one of the things this reminds me of here is patience. Because when we get a whole lot of energy, sometimes we just want to run out and use that energy right away. 
but we need to be patient. We need to learn, become enlightened by that energy. And then we are changed by it. Something within us is reborn. And then we become inspired. And then our dreams are affected to some conscious realm. And then, finally, we can go and plant that seed of what we want because now we understand a new way how we're going to utilize our energy. So if there's a progression, you can look at the progressions for each one of these. So patience is very important that when we want to do something in life, we understand that there's a timing. You know, that's how it is with all things. A lot of times we want to rush out. We, we get an idea and we want to rush out and make it happen like this. But maybe it's not ready to happen like that. Maybe it needs some more timing to be involved. Maybe it needs more elements. Maybe it needs some more work. Whatever the case is, it's important that we are aware of these things and understand all things have a timing to them. And we need to be patient to allow that timing to work itself out. I always like to think of it as the example of the uh, the example of a script, okay, a movie. Let's say this is God's movie down here. All the world's indeed, indeed is a stage. That's what Shakespeare said. So this is a huge movie. We're all playing a part, but we have to know when our role is to come on stage to really, you know, do what we're going to do. If we jump out on stage and it's the second act and we're not supposed to come out to the third act, we're not in sync with everybody else. We want to make sure we understand where we fit in, who we are, why we're here, how we're connecting ourselves in with this thing called life. And when we do, we become more patient because we know where we fit in and we know when to move. And it makes all of life easier because then we don't have to worry about the other moments when we're not doing something because we know that we're doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Current space weather, the solar wind is 354.8 kilometers per second. Planetary K index is unsettled between a 3 and a 4. Planetary K index, nothing facing our way at this moment. M class flare at 5, X class at 1, geomagnetic storm activity 15 in the mid latitudes, 20 in the high. And over on the Gregorian calendar, today is 15 Tishri. It is the first day of Sukkot, which is also called the Feast of Tabernacles. It is an eight day celebration that has to deal with the Things such as the exodus from Egypt, celebrating their time away. We can go here and we look a little bit more details. The sukkah is created by this point in time, basically a temporary hut representing the type of structures that the, the Jews slept in when they escaped from Egypt. So it's just something very temporary, and that's what it represents, a hut of temporary construction with a roof covering of raw, unfinished vegetable matter. The whole idea is just simply to remember. And uh, Upshin, according to Kabbalistic tradition, we are visited in the Sukkah by seven supernatural guests, otherwise known as Ushbin, Uspzin, these seven priests, or these supernatural priests, are Ab Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Aaron, Joseph, and David. The four kinds. This is tying together the four different uh, items here. It says, and you shall take it yourself on the first day. Instructs the Torah in Leviticus, a splendid fruit of a tree fronds of dates, the fronds of a thick-leaved tree, and the aravoth of the river. Okay. We tie these together. So the palm branch, three myrtle twigs, and two yellow twigs. Two willow twigs are bound together. Each day of Sukkot, except Shabbat, we take the lalav in hand, recite a blessing over it, and hold it. Take hold of the etrog 
hold the four times together and move them back and forth in all directions. Right, left, up, down, and back. Okay, there's a water drawing celebration which takes place when the Holy Temple stood in Jerusalem. One of the special Sukkot, Sukkot observations was to pour water on the altar. The drawing of water for this purpose was preceded by all-night celebrations in the temple courtyard and the 15 steps leading to the Azara or the inner courtyard stood Levi's while playing a variety of musical instruments sages danced and juggled burning torches and huge oil burning lamps illuminated the entire city the singing and dancing went on until daybreak when a procession would make its way to the Shiloh spring which flowed to a valley of the temp below the temple to draw water with joy one who did not see the joy of the water drawing celebrations declared the sages of the Talmud has not seen joy in this life. A water poured on each day of the festival. The special celebrations were held only on Chol Hamod, since other of the elements of the celebration are forbidden on Yom Tov. Today we commemorate these joyous celebrations by holding Simchat Beit Ha Shoyevav, which is joy in the water drawing, events in the street with music and dancing. Right, and the daily thought is trickle of delight. Every moment that your soul inhabits this world, she can provide delight to her maker above. After 70, 80, maybe 120 years, the soul ascends to a place above, a place of ecstasy, as great as the soul can receive without dissolving into nothingness. And what is that ecstasy? No more than a trickle of the pleasure of God received from her when she was in her place below. Alright, there you have it. Another significance about today, as I read yesterday, was the 15th of Tishri is one day that biblical scholars um, say that could be the day that Jesus was born. Certainly the time of the celebration of when Jesus was born. So, I'm going to show you that again when we get to there in just a bit. Let's jump to UFO news right now. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. Alrighty, Dirk. Thank you very much. Today, our first story takes us over to El Paso, Texas. This footage was taken off my own camera from inside an apartment in El Paso starting at 7.16 p.m. The second set of footage was taken at 7.29 I believe these to be unidentified flying, unidentified flying objects because the strain wave with the lights were moving in the sky. There was no perceivable wind. The lights took upon a triangular and V formation throughout the footage. All right, here we go. Video itself is nine minutes thirteen seconds. All right, let's move from there. Here's another object discovered on the surface of Mars. Looks like a skull, doesn't it? Looks like some sort of an animal skull. Here would be the eye. Here would be the top part, the nose, bottom jaw. What we could see is where teeth were. There's the original NASA photo. This is a very interesting example of anomalies that the Mars ro NASA rover passes over rather by in then investigate. In this skull we noticed there was upper teeth and the teeth of the same horse fossils here on Earth. I have to admit that Alien Art TV has a good argument here which warrants further investigation by the rover. The clear skull on Mars found so far it is, has a metal blade or arrow embedded in the jawbone. Lower mandible evidence of past animal life and hunting by intelligent Martians no less. It is a skull of a herbivore possibly even a dinosaur mammal that was hunted and killed at some point in the past. Could this belong to the famous Mars leg bone found recently? Could be. This is a fine example of what is possible. When the rover takes a close-up image, it was not hard to squeeze the detail of this photo. Unlike most we get so f we get from the curiosity, this is the closest, largest specimen so far. There we go. There's the blade that they see. Right there. 
Alright, so obviously something has gone into this. Looks like it is not part of it. You can obviously see the difference. Alright, let's move from there. Five historical photos of amazing flying saucer found in Air Force Captain's photo album. These interesting photos of a dish-shaped UFO were just reported to MUFON. They were allegedly taken in 1962 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Here's what the submitter said. My wife and I found these five incredible daytime Polaroid photos in an old photo album belonging to her grandfather, who was a captain in the Air Force, stationed in Albuquerque from 61 through 65. The man seen in the picture pointing to the object is my wife's grandfather. I scanned these photos in and blew them up, and they are very compelling. If it was a hoax, it's a good one. Nice good shots here. Going back into the early 60s. Right. Links available. Send your name to Deep Space. You can now send your own name to fly on Orion's flight test, scheduled to launch December 4 through 6, 2004. Orion is NASA's new spacecraft that will carry humans deep into space. You can register till the 31st of October. There's a place where you can register your name right here. Just click on that. And that will take you to there you go. Boarding pass is submitted. Put your name in there. It'll take your name to space. How about that? Yay! Take your name to space. Question. Does religion dictate your beliefs in extraterrestrials? Believe in aliens? Then you're probably an atheist or a Muslim. Study reveals how religion affects your likelihood of believing in E.T. Astronomer David Weintraub at Vanderbilt University in Tennessee has written a book discussing which faiths are likely to embrace aliens. The study in it reveals that 55% of atheists believe aliens exist, 40% of Muslims, 37 Jews, and 32% of Christians believe in aliens as well as divine beings. Professor Weintraub thinks that the Asian religions would have the least difficulty in accepting this discovery of extraterrestrial life. With around a third of the Americans admitting to believing in aliens and more than exoplanets being discovered that could harbor life, it is no longer unusual to believe in the, exist in the existence of E.T. Now an astronomer has claimed that a person's belief in extraterrestrial life varies according to whether they believe in a god or even a specifically a religion they identify with. In the new book, he reveals that atheists are most likely group of people to believe in extraterrestrials, and 55% followed by Muslims. It summarizes what religious leaders and theologians from over 24 major religions say about alien life, including Judaism, Roman Catholicism, the Church of England, Hinduism, and Buddhism. Professor Weintraub, astronomy, astronomy professor Weintraub of Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, said, When I did my research, I found that only half a dozen books were all written about the question of extraterrestrial life in Christianity, and most of them about Roman Catholicism, so I decided to take a broader look. Very few of us have spent time thinking hard about what actual knowledge about extraterrestrial life, whether viruses or single-cell creatures or bipeds, piloted in intergalactic ships might mean for our personal beliefs and our relationships with the divine. His book, Religions and Extraterrestrial Life, includes a result of a poll that found 55% of atheists believe that aliens exist, while well, 44% of Muslims and 37% of Jews think that life is out there in the universe. Around 36% Hindus and 32% Christians believe in aliens as well as divine beings. Alright, and then here are some uh, images which show these are ancient paintings go back quite some time. Here's Mary, an extraterrestrial ship. Here you have a little dude in here, right here. And he's looking up at the ship. So it's very intentional, whoever painted this, that they wanted not only to paint something, but somebody seeing it as well. There's many more of these types out there. A lot more to this article. So check it out. Read the rest of it. I'm going to move on to the next story here. 
leading Dutch astronomer says there are 3,000 alien civilizations in our galaxy. There are probably thousands of alien civilizations living in the Milky Way, but our chances of ever meeting them are extremely low, an expert has said. Michael Garrett, head of the Netherlands Institute for Radio Astronomy, called Astron, made the comments on the International Astronomical Congress in Toronto. Reported by Discovery News, the astronomer said the data collected by NASA and other space agencies suggests that Earth is one of 40 billion potentially habitable planets in our galaxy. In addition, another habitable planet is believed to form every year, meaning the chance of alien civilizations existing is very high. There may be around 3,000 alien civilizations already out there, according to the study. However, Garrett said that within the sheer size of the Milky Way, sending out signals and receiving one back from a civilization advanced enough to possess their technology is unlikely at this moment. On the average, you do expect the civilizations to be separated by at least 1,000 light years in the Milky Way. He is quoted as saying, There are large distances for communication purposes. You need to allow for twice the travel distance, so you're talking about civilizations that have to be around at least a few thousand years in order to have the opportunity to talk to each other. He pointed to Earth as an example of how life developed, with extremely simple life forms having been around billions of years. Intelligent life only arrived much later, he said. I really don't know the time scales in which civilizations persist. Intelligent life only developed essentially in the last few minutes of the overall evolution of life on the planet. I don't want to be too negative about this, but my base conclusion is that SETI signals will be rare in the Milky Way. While Garrett does not expect to hear from aliens in the near future, experts are SETI and more hopeful. In March, leading SETI astronomer Seth Shostak said he expects to make contact within the next 20 years, thanks to advances in technology. Speaking to Popular Mechanics, he said that the search is still in its infancy and limited by equipment and money. He believes we are not far out. My guess will succeed in the next two decades is based on the fact that with improvements in digital electronics and computers, which are getting better and cheaper, following Moore's law, we will become continually shifting through the sky faster and you can extra extrapolate how fast we'll be able to search, assuming we have money in the next decade or two. All right, well, again, I say to Seth, Seth Shostak, and uh, also to Mr. Garrett, look closer, okay? I know you're looking way, way out there. Look closer. Every day there's reports, and every day there's spaceships unidentified flying object closer to our planet, not by the sun, by the moon. So if you're looking way, way out there, you're not going to find necessarily life so quickly as if you looked closer. Closer. Look up at the sun when they see the objects up there. There's a big black square thing that keeps showing up. There's uh, circles and disks that are out there. There's objects flying across the moon. When we look out, we see things in our own sky. So, again, look closer. That's all I'm going to say. All right, one more story here. This one. Russia orders Obama tell the world about aliens or we will. This comes to us from SPESIA. Specia. The stunning Ministry of Foreign Affairs reports on Prime Minister Medebbeb's agenda at the World Economic Forum this week states that Russia will warn President Obama that time has come for the world to know the truth about aliens, and if the United States won't participate in the announcement, the Kremlin will do so on its own. The WEF, the Forum, is a Swiss nonprofit foundation based in Holgany. Geneva and describes itself as an independent international organization committed to improving the state of the world by engaging business, political, academic, and other leaders of society to shape a global religion, regional, and industrial agendas. The forum is known for its annual meeting in Davos, a mountain resort in Graubünden in the eastern Alps of the Switzerland. The meeting brings together some 2,500 top business leaders international political leaders, selected intellectuals, and journalists to discuss the most pressing issues facing the world. All right, I'll leave the rest of the article for you as always. That's our UFO news. Let's get to regular stuff. I'll be right back. Come into our circle, great spirit. Fill our souls with
realized I used the word I said uh, we're gonna get back to some regular stuff as if this is regular stuff right the word regular and normal I don't know if it necessarily fits with the topics that are presented here on this show alrighty so Thursdays bringers of the dawn we've been moving right along to a book that's been channeled through Barbara Marciniak from the Pleiadians we're in chapter 13 Whose purpose are you? That's a good question. Whose purpose are you? We said that you exist for a purpose, but whose purpose? Did you ever think of that one? Whose purpose are you? You have a pur purpose because all aspects of consciousness are connected to one another. None exist outside of the system. They are all part of the whole. That is the purpose we want you to seek. The essence of the vehicle you occupy and the energy you generate are part of a developmental sequence that you can say has a purpose for your personal search in life. But what purpose do you add to the whole? Can you conceive of someone else using your purpose and growing from it? An energy that you do not know exists? The universe is interlocked in such a way that it is based on the domino system. All aspects of consciousness have gathered into this universe to affect each other because it is the only way consciousness in this particular system can experience itself. In another system or another universal structure, each and every type of consciousness may be completely free. In other words, you could be on your own type and on your own and serve no other purpose to anyone else. This is not true in this universe. There are many different universes and themes. Just like 100 pennies make a dollar, Certain collections of universes make something that is a collection of energies. Eventually, you'll begin to fathom and recognize that there are whole systems of existence that have nothing to do with existence as you are working with it. The system is designed as a free will zone within which everything is interlocking and interworking with everything else. There are other kinds of zones which perhaps you could also call free will zones where everything is independent of everything else. Here on Earth, everything is interlocked with everything else. There is much more space in the system which everything is independent. Or let's say there is much more awareness of space, not necessarily space. That kind of universe could in actuality be smaller than this universe. But because it is not operating out of density, the awareness of space could be greater. Your purpose is to carry information. And by carrying it, to make the information accessible to others by frequency. When we share a story with you, you end up carrying information. Information is light. Light is information. The more you become informed, the more you alter your frequency. You are electromagnetic creatures, and everything that you are, you broadcast to everyone else. Just as you can recognize someone in fear, you can recognize someone in joy if you begin to learn how to use your body to tune in to that kind of recognition. Your assignment is to carry information and to evolve yourself to the highest capability within human form. When you do this, you cannot help but to affect multitudes. You may feel that your particular occupation is not a grand scale. Say, for instance, you are a witness. Remember, things are not what they appear to be on the outside, and everyone you come in contact with is affected by your vibration. Some of you may be left in a very menial or mundane jobs for a while. And you may have led simply by parents or guardians to your children. Or you may do work that you feel is not exactly the road to the high glory. Yet you will have a certain time period in which you must assimilate all of the information that is indeed radical. You must fit it into your life and you must fit it into the history of your world by living it, perceiving it, and getting used to it. Once you can consistently maintain a frequency of information, 
and not be riding the roller coaster of emotions up and down because you don't know who you are. You will be given a task. You will be, it will be put before you. It will be part of your blueprint. Your blueprint is your own personal detailed plan or outline of action for this lifetime. Many of you already know your blueprint and what you will be guided to. Each of you knows your plan in the deepest portion of your being. What gets in the way of your knowing is logically thinking that you don't have the talent or the, for this plan or that you can't do it. If you go into the negative state, you will receive a picture of your identity and reality and the next step of your assignment day to day. Meditation is a state of communication. It is not a way to go somewhere to get lost. Meditation is a way to get informed and go to a place that nourishes you. You will move into your own purpose and more than likely will have to do with facilitating the frequency, transducing it, stepping it down to others, explaining it, using it to heal others and stabilizing it for the human race. When each of you can hold the frequency of information without freaking out and can count upon, be counted upon to be consistent, then you anchor the frequency on the planet. The frequency is recognized. It cannot be traced exactly because it cannot be recognized. And it is being recognized now. That is why there has been a frenzied step up to alter that frequency. You will see the frequency control everywhere you look. Only now you will be able to recognize it for what it is. You will find that all things in your life have prepared you to step, step for what you will be doing. At one time, perhaps you were a Boy Scout leader and you learned how to work with young boys. Maybe at another time you were in a restaurant learn how to work with food and to serve. Through your jobs, you created certain aspects of reality that later on, when you must teach these systems how to go beyond themselves, you have an idea where these humans are coming from. We speak to you as if you are not human because to us you are not. To us you are members of the family of light and we know your multidimensional selves. We speak to you about dealing with humans because it is your assignment to integrate with them, soothe them, and awaken their sparks of light within them so that they are not all destroyed and so that this place can be home to a new species and a new realm of activity. We have talked to you many times about evolving DNA and the frequency modulation that has kept the species and the experiment controllable and manageable. You have been hired on an assignment from the future to catapult back to the cycle of existence to incarnate many times so that you can understand what has kept humans controlled. In this way you can operate from the inside and change the system. When you are in a battle with your logical mind you are experiencing a conflict between the portion of yourself that is human which has brought the story and a portion of yourself that is the family of light which has not bought the story and is learning about the bigger picture. Begin to realize that the portion of yourself that operates out of the logic is teaching you something. It is giving you first-hand experience of how most of the operation, uh, most of the population operates in first-hand knowledge of what you are going to have to work with to reach others. If it were quite easy for you to move into intuition and operate from there completely out of trust, and if you do not have the duality of understanding with the logical mind, in the long run, you would become very impatient with the rest of humanity. If it were easy for you, how could you possibly understand how difficult it is for others? Humans have been controlled by the frequency for a long time. They are so used to this frequency control and the logical mix has been so overly developed in recent times that there is so much suspicion and fear dark that, that is controlled by the people and are frightened or even to go into and trust that they could possibly receive information on their own. When you think that the entities who have modulated the ways humans broadcast themselves by rearranging their DNA in instituting various scenarios and events upon this planet and then funneling the results of this psychic energy through different portals out into space for their own reasons, you can see what they are battling, what you are battling. There are those of you and the whole planet there are those who want you and the whole planet to function in no other way but through logic, a very fearful logic. The best advice we can offer you at this time is to use that logic. Say, I will be in logic here for a moment and see what my logic mind is doing. It is wanting to take over. It has been that way. This is how it is and has always been told that this other stuff is true too. 
I will simply observe how I waver between one and the other. Am I angry? Am I insecure? What brings me upliftment? What brings me security? What does each mode of thinking do for me? What am I perceiving about myself? How am I feeling? Observe and acknowledge all of this. Then say, now I am given a chance to be on stage. What do I want? Reaffirm what you want and how do you want to evolve? Do you see how cycling back through doubt is actually part of the divine plan? It is part of understanding that others who will be following your footsteps will grow through. You must learn to open your compassion center or heart center, which is probably one of the most difficult things to do. Learn to feel compassion for yourself and for everyone else as you have the courage to let go and to feel. It is very important to learn how to observe with and deal with events. Different events are brought to you so that you can observe them. Learn to observe your behavior and to spread much more time alone even if it sometimes feels difficult for you and you feel lonely. In the long run, you will thank us for directing you to have more meaningful encounter with yourself. You hold the riches and the ripeness that you can bring you into a higher realization. There is an order for you to operate that within part of yourself cannot, yourself cannot see. Sometimes when you part of yourself is operating without vision or seeing, events occur to get you back on track. Be aware that in this new chaos of consciousness and confusion and shifting and uncertainty, there is a divine order. This could be compared to baking a cake. Each ingredient in the recipe is of itself an integral whole and has its own sense of the structure. The eggs, the flour, the butter, the sugar. When you begin to put them all together, it looks as if they are making chaos. Someone could say, we are wrecking everything. You wreck that egg. Where did that sugar go? You are wrecking all of the essential elements here. They don't understand perhaps the magic of catalytic formula of heat. There is a catalytic energy present at this time on this planet as all of the individual structures begin to melt and merge to create what looks like chaos. There will be something new born out of this just like a cake is born out of chaos of mixing together certain ingredients. Someone who does not understand that after you mix the cake batter you put it in the oven to bake it could look like a gooey batter and think that they made nothing. Many people on the planet will not recognize them as higher order behind the chaos. There is a recipe being followed. Each of you has a specific assignment within this recipe. Of course, you will have to you have to free will to determine how you will follow the recipe and to be an ingredient of it. This free will allows you to decide the specifics of how you will live your life to be designed although you must live out your blueprint. Whether you choose to do this with difficulty or with ease, in poverty or in riches, it is up to you. It, it all depends on where you have been convinced to put your boundaries. What can we say to convince you of all these boundaries up and down, stop limiting, that you believe you can? What can we say to you to convince you to take all of your boundaries down? and to stop limiting what you believe can be yours. If there's anything you wish to you to believe, it is to have each of your boundaries and be free and knowing that everything that you entertain somehow determines your experience. If we could get you to live 100% of, of your time according to what you want, we would feel that this has been a most successful year. We're going to ask of you to make a commitment to live a cleaner and more impeccable life, we ask you to accept responsibility in areas that you have not even thought of accepting responsibility. We want you to act as if you know what is going on. Act as if you are divinely guided in every choice you make and begin to believe that you are always in the right place at the right time. Say to yourself, I am in divine guidance. I am always at the right place at the right time. Everything I do is orchestrated for my higher growth my higher consciousness and my higher revolution. We want you to operate in that way all of the time now. Be living keepers of frequency. When light is brought into your body, it, f it fires your light and coated filaments and helps to rebundle the DNA, creating a frequency change. Frequency is what you know. Frequency is your identity. Then you have periods where you may have many different dimensions that existed upon your planet at the same time. In the last thousand years, there have been a receding of the many different dimensions that great chaos and darkness has come over its population. These dimensions or other realities or places where the laws of existence are a bit different 
are returning. You help them return by pulling the dimensions onto this planet and then creating what is called a dimensional merge. Sometimes you move into these dimensions and do not recognize that you are in them. You enter an altered state, particularly when you go into a sacred site on Earth. You move into different dimensional frequency and everything changes. You feel uplifted and full of energy or sick to your stomach. Something goes on and you move into an altered state. Since you are in an altered state, you do not always know you are in it. That is the beginning of the dimensional merge. When you return home from a sacred site, you may look back and say, Wow, what happened there? That is the feeling of experiencing difficult di different dimensions. Dimensional collisions are another story. Those who are gripped with fear and refuse to change even through their purpose is to be on this planet. At this time, to change will experience the dimensions as collisions. The dimensional merge for them will be a solid wall of cement hitting another solid reality of cement. Great discomfort occurs on this planet for many. There is already occurring a very small scale of discomfort in the nervous system. People may develop disease of the remote system supply because of their refusal to evolve and change their stand about themselves and the reality. All of you who are working with other humans, whether they are medical people, body workers, teachers, musicians, or whatever, understand that this is the human dilemma, the need to drift the definition of self and reality. Use your will and the mind to decide how you would like reality to construct itself. By doing this, you will eventually discover that there is a higher will and a higher plan, and you will ride your consciousness to it to discover the divine path. The divine path has in mind the evolution of consciousness. As human species, you believe for eons that others have told you about your, yourselves. As we have said, there's been a purpose to this. Others have wanted to control you, strive as you would for attainment. It was difficult on the, low, on the planet because the DNA was scattered and closed down. So no matter what you wanted, the vibrational connections were not available. Now that the vibrational connections are coming onto the planet, the divine plan, which you can think of as a grid or blueprint, is coming closer to Earth, and the dimensions are going to meet eventually. What are they going to meet? Is, when they are going to meet is up to you. The divine plan is not scheduled to come here on a specific date. It depends on how quickly humans can meet the needs and master themselves. What does it mean to master yourself? In order to understand the divine plan and move into this blueprint, you must look at yourself. You must be able to master who you are. There are many things in the society for which you must master a test in order to say, yes, I qualify. I have mastered these rules and I utilize them to put my to put them to my will. For example, you must master how to drive a car to get a license. And many of you can master your bodies with you and use them with your will. Very few. Why? Because no one told you it was possible. We are here to remind you of a number of things. Earth at this time is a very difficult place to be simply because those who are coded to bring the changes onto this planet are coded to teach themselves. You see, the problem on this planet over and over again has been the gods, one god after another. Who have the gods been? Well, the gods created you. You are their project. You are dear to them. However, some of you, some of them you are not very dear to because they, are not, they do not understand emotion and feelings, and some of them are enamored of different realities than you are. Consciousness has allowed the expression and you have been allowed your expression within limitation by those who have been governing you. From your point of view, you have never let them govern you and you will have no idea that they exist. They bring dramas onto this planet in the guide of what you call religion, leadership, or sometimes inspiration. Events, even though they are orchestrated to achieve certain things, sometimes gather those who hang on and many other probabilities come out of what was intended. We want to communicate to you that there is a drastic change going on. We cannot emphasize this enough. Earth is in for a big shakeup. The shakeup involves humanity processing and conceiving of data that is totally out of the current paradigm. This means that your nervous system will be assaulted with data and you must be able to unlock it itself from how it believes it controls or perceives reality. The task for members of the family of light who have desired to take this information inside of yourselves is to anchor a new frequency on the planet by anchoring it impeccably inside of yourselves. This is not easy. It was not meant to be easy. You do not come here to have an easy assignment. You are renegades. 
and you have been renegades. If you could each give each of you a minute's worth of your multidimensional memories, you would know what we are talking about. You would know in the deepest portion of your being that time and time again in different guises and different collections of form, you have gone where change needed to be anchored. You have gone many times, busted the paradigms, liberated yourselves, and moved beyond where you thought your identity was. This is divine plan, merging the self. The divine plan has many manifestations and brings together many kinds of forces. As you have heard as the talk about the forces of light and the forces of darkest, we have nicknamed them the white t-shirts and the dark t-shirts. To make the situation neutral, you have to know it is a game. We always want you to know that there is grave seriousness to the game and that in and around and above the game to be the divine plan. The divine plan can be anchored as a vibration into certain human bodies that are coded for this and they came here to carry this frequency. You can then see this of your own blueprint and impeccability. When your own life rises to a position where you do not even recognize it as your life, you allow the energy of the non-physical realms to use you as a conduit to merge the dimensions and liberate consciousness into a new way of perceiving. Even though there is a death and destruction coming to your world, remember that death and destruction come in the autumn every year on this planet. The flowers and the leaves and the trees are killed by the frost. Things wither and die. Perhaps someone who lives where it is always summer would be very disturbed when they saw autumn for the first time. They would think, goodness, the world is being destroyed here. All the beauty is being taken away. Understand that this is what is going on with the earth. It is the season while some things will die so that many new things can be born. It is all part of the divine plan. That is the end of chapter 13. And that brings us to... Well, here, let me show you this before we go. I brought this up yesterday. Here's a timeline for you to look at. Ask the question, when was Jesus born? And according to this timeline, it can show us that 15 of Tishri is a day that biblical scholars say quite possibly is the date that Jesus was born. And this is based on knowing the timing of certain events in the Bible. We know from Zechariah's story when Elizabeth found out she was pregnant when that occurred. So we could trace the timing from there to when Mary was informed six months down the road and went to visit Elizabeth and then stayed with Elizabeth for three months to when John was born, which was around the time of Passover, around April. And then from there, we know that Jesus was born six months later, which brings us to October. And you can go through here all of the clues that you can look, look at, double check them, read through the scriptures, do the math yourself, and you will find that it comes to a point of showing that today, the 15th day of Tishri, the beginning of the festival of uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, at the beginning of Sukkot, is a time that biblical scholars say Jesus Christ was born. So if that's the case, happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday to you, and uh, have a wonderful year. All right, our message for today, our channeled message for today, comes to us from Salusa. Salusa. October 3rd, 2014, by Mike Quincy. Salusa. Never underestimate the powers and technologies that we have to transform your Earth in a very short period, to one more fitting to your future expectations. For example, you are almost conditioned to expect some part of Earth to be involved in wars. Around you is evidence of them that have ravaged your planet for centuries, with no obvious end to the cycles of death and destruction. Peace seems just as far away as ever, it was, and man continues to waste the resources of Earth, whilst millions of your civilization live in squalor and near starvation. Yet for all that we can bring an instant stop to war, but there has to be an acceptance of meaningful peace and intent to become as one where your future is concerned. Sometimes the only way to progress and achieve peace together, cannot come about until as a civilization you recognize the oneness of the human race. Looking at your history you are slow to learn but as you say you are getting there. At some point in the near future it will transpire that because you have made sufficient spiritual progress, that it is time to allow such souls to surge forward without the hindrance of those who still lag behind. It is in no way discriminating against them but allowing those who are ready to progress to the higher vibrations, without being delayed by those who are not. After all it is inevitable that those who are not ready to move into the higher vibrations, 
will have their own path to follow to continue their evolution. The new cycle has begun and slowly but surely all remnants of the earlier one will disappear, to be replaced by a more updated version that has been born of the light. There will be no place for the lower vibrations that could not in any event exist within it, and all thought levels will be based on light and love. Mother Earth will also enjoy the changes that shall see the Earth restored to its original glory. You will be surprised at how quickly they can take place, and it will be both an enjoyable and exciting time to be on Earth. With the return of the higher vibrations our space friends can also appear as often as they wish to, and will use their experience to speed up the changes on Earth. The inner Earth civilization will also partake in the changes, and you will meet them a lot quicker than you might have expected. In other words dear ones, it is all change for the better even if it is difficult to envision at present. Many of you are already aware that the Illuminati have held on to new advancements that have taken them far into the future. They have never had any intention of sharing them with you, but keep them to keep power in their hands. Do not worry however as they will not benefit from them in the long run and we shall ensure that you certainly do, but please note there is no place or indeed a future for weapons of war. There is so much new technology waiting to be introduced to you, and exciting times lie ahead. So please do not become disheartened when nothing appears to be happening. We can assure that our activities are never at a standstill, and we are fully committed to ensuring that you safely make your way into the new age. We monitor your earth and the skies around you to ensure that you can evolve unimpeded by outside interference. We certainly control the activities of the Dark Ones, to ensure that there is a limitation to the extent that they can go in preparing to take over the earth. However, as we have intimated previously, we must also allow them to evolve within the confines that are placed upon them. Life abounds everywhere around you, often out of your sight due to the difference in vibrations. What you might consider to be a little proof of that is when photographs are developed with beings or ghostly images in them, that were not observed at the time. It is simply due to the sensitivity of the photographic film that picks up an image that your eyes cannot. So looking through the chaos from the outside and within, we see beyond the apparent muddle and find the early beginnings of the new age with all of its technologies waiting to be introduced. Some require major changes that could not be contemplated at present, requiring such resources that are unavailable now. However, gradually everything is being prepared for the day when they can, and progress will be made at a breathtaking speed. There has not been a period such as your present one for millennia of time, and it is sure to become more apparent as time progresses. So we hope you can see that you have no need to be worried as to the outcome of your present experiences, so concentrate on your own needs and ensure that you are fully prepared for the changes. We generally find that people are more open-minded when it comes to subjects that were once considered too difficult to discuss openly. The fear of being ridiculed has almost passed as the new age has unlocked doors to matters that have not been generally discussed. So do not hide your light, and feel bold enough to talk about it and you may find that more people than you thought are interested. After all these are the times of revelations, as for too long you have been kept in the dark as to the truth of your being and the human history. As we mentioned in one of our earlier messages, you all have your origins off Earth. That does not mean you are entirely new to Earth, inasmuch that you have already had many lives upon it. Can you begin to see that Earth is a school for life, and in fact gives you one of the quickest experiences in which to evolve? I am Salusa from Sirius, and always pleased when I can give an insight into your future. Naturally there is always a right time to expand your mind, and hopefully enable you to release old concepts that no longer serve you. In time gone past people were easily bound by superstition that comes about from a lack of understanding. Advancements in science and your technologies has helped expand your knowledge, which is quite a transition from the days when you thought you were at the center of the universe. You can go a lot further so please keep an open mind. I leave you with my love and energy to lift you up. Thank you, Salusa. Very nice message from Salusa, again confirming what it is that we've been hearing. So we know that we're on the right path, we just need to continue keeping on and not get caught up in worrying. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Another deep breath. 
exhale again and breathe again and just in and out and just feel yourself breathing and as you continue to breathe contemplate what it is that you are doing here on this planet come to understand why you are here what is your purpose and as you begin to contemplate the ideas of your purpose you begin to think about aspects of yourself that you haven't thought about skills and talents that you have begin to become understood and you begin to realize why you go through the experiences you go through it's all part of your purpose imagine yourself walking through life and you look around and you can see that there are those walking around in confusion not knowing what their purpose is not knowing why they are here and as you look around and you see this confusion it helps you to understand the clarity that comes with understanding because you see those who aren't in confusion those who are clear about why they are here and so you strive to be like those clear and aware so you imagine yourself being open to receiving from the universe all the wisdom the universe has to share with you and so as you go through the world today just imagine yourself receiving wisdom from the universe learning from life all around you about the process of life that is happening to you and within you imagine the love being sent to you from all around and just imagine sending love right back because you know the power that love has in manifesting your heart's desire so let's imagine sending out love into the world as we continue on this journey let our subconscious mind spread love out to each and individual we meet each and every person group and every place we go let's just send out light and love imagine our subconscious mind continue on that journey today and let's bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three three coming back to the present moment filled with confidence two coming back to the present moment filled with faith and one coming back to the present moment happy healthy and whole happy healthy and whole take another deep breath exhale and open your eyes that's it my friends that is the show for today thank you very much for being here I'll be back tomorrow until then go check out the links see what's going on we got the beginning of an eight-day celebration Sukkot also a time to acknowledge the birth of Jesus and the many other things that are changing in the world all around us have an awesome day I love you keep loving each other I'll talk to you soon peace I'm out of here.